How Humanity Cheats God Text of Discourse, Matthew chapter 22 verses 1 to end, And Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables, and said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king, which made a marriage for his son, and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. Again, he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready, come unto the marriage. But they made light of it, and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise, and the remnant took his servants, and entreated them spitefully, and slew them. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth, and he sent forth his armies, and destroyed those murderers, and burned up their city. Then said he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, be to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highways, and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good, and the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment, and he said unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Then went the Pharisees, and took counsel how they might entangle him in his talk. And they sent out unto him their disciples with the Herodians, saying, Master, we know that thou art true, and teachest the way of God in truth, neither carest thou for any man, for thou regardest not the person of men. Tell us therefore, what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar, or not? But Jesus perceived their wickedness, and said, Why tempt ye me, ye hypocrites? Shew me the tribute money. And they brought unto him a penny. And he said unto them, Whose is this image and superscription? They say unto him, Caesar's. Then said he unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. When they had heard these words, they marveled, and left him, and went their way. The same day came to him the Sadducees, which say that there is no resurrection, and asked him, saying, Master, Moses said, If a man die, having no children, his brother shall marry his wife, and raise up seed unto his brother. Now there were with us seven brethren, and the first, when he had married a wife, deceased, and, having no issue, left his wife unto his brother, likewise the second also, and the third, unto the seventh. And last of all the woman died also. Therefore in the resurrection whose wife shall she be of the seven? For they all had her. Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. For in the resurrection they neither marry, nor are given in marriage, but as the angels of God in heaven. But as touching the resurrection of the dead, have ye not read that which was spoken unto you by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob? God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. And when the multitude heard this, they were astonished at his doctrine. But when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him, and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. While the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them, saying, What think ye of Christ? Whose son is he? They say unto him, The son of David. He said unto them, How then doth David in spirit call him Lord, saying, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, till I make thine enemies thy footstool. If David then call him Lord, how is he his son? And no man was able to answer him a word, neither durst any man from that day forth ask him any more questions. Matthew chapter 22 verses 1 to 46 Reference Matthew chapter 22 verses 15 to 22 God deserves his rights, Beloved brethren, it is most pathetic that the money God has given you is lavishly spent on idolatry, fornication, 
and mundane things instead of spending it on the services of God. Upon all the revenues collected in this country, how much is allocated to God? Is all not embezzled by the so-called top government officials who are all thieves? Though every wealth belongs to God, what proportion of the nation's wealth is assigned to God? Now you should be fully aware of the fact that God is the direct owner of everything in the world, therefore you must not deny him anything, for the scripture has said, Give unto Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and unto God what belongs to God. Matthew chapter 22 verse 21 Consider all the country's revenues that are collected. Some huge amounts of money have been budgeted for various projects such as building hotels, tourist centers, etc. are everywhere in the country. But how much have the government ever budgeted for the services of God? It is important that you do not deprive God of his belonging. High-handed wickedness, you are a witness that the government had been depriving God of his portion. Though it is a well-known fact that all things in heaven and on earth belong to God, man is still ignorant of this fact. On individual basis, you have put up exclusive estates for yourself, you have built modern villages and towns for your comforts. But the question is where is God's estate, city, hamlet, or house? You have different cars for various occasions and leisure. Where is the one you have kept for God? Do you see the level of selfishness you are putting up within the kingdom? Deny not the workman his wages, who owns you? Who owns the heaven and the earth and the fullness thereof? Who protects and cares for you? Who accompanies you everywhere you go? These are the necessary questions you have to address immediately. Is God partial when he tells you to render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and unto God the things which belong to God? At all times, you nourish the flesh and ignore the spirit. Should the spirit continue to starve? You have two masters and you deprive one completely of his rights. This amounts to having both a spirit and a body, but you continue to nourish the body and forget about the spirit. Therefore, I am now admonishing you to render unto the spirit what belongs to the spirit, even right now. Man's high-handed selfishness towards his creator accounts for the various problems he is presently facing in the world. If for instance you have two children, and instead of sharing things equally between them, you assign everything to one and deprive the other of all, tell me why trouble and hatred would not develop between the two children. This is also the case with a man who has two wives but wills everything to the one wife and her children. Tell me how confusion, quarreling, and death would not exist in such a family. Give unto the flesh what belongs to the flesh and to the spirit what belongs to the spirit. But which are the things which belong to the spirit and what are the things which belong to the flesh? Which of the things which belong to the spirit have you given to the spirit? You have been told not to drink, steal, commit adultery, fornication, worship idols, neither should you be easily provoked. Which of these injunctions of the spirit have you yet practiced? You have initiated yourself into various devilish societies and courts of this world, but how many of the fellowships in God's kingdom have you been identified with? How many aspects of tenets of God are you actively involved in? Read Romans chapter 13 verses 3 to 10, For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Would thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same, for he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain, for he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. For for this cause pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers, attending continually upon this very thing. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. O no man anything, but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet, and if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. The injunction which matters, brethren, God is impartial, 
and he has never ordered that one should be crucified for the sake of the other, out of love God advises that women should love and subject themselves to their husbands. And the husband should also do the same to their wives. So also does he advise children to be obedient to their parents and parents to love their children. An adage warns the host not to maltreat and kill strangers. Now are you not killing the strangers in your midst and have you not taken divine laws into your own hands? The Father also has instructed us to help the poor and the orphans. Which of these things have you done? It is also stated that he who has two garments should give one to him who has none. This admonition does not only stop with donating garments but it also applies to food items and everything in your possession. Which of these commandments are you putting into practice? Read Ephesians chapter 5 verses 20 to end, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands, as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church, and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot, or wrinkle, or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church, for we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they two shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. Ephesians chapter 5 verses 20 to 33 Brethren, have you now seen your nakedness? Every time, you continue to shout that God says that wives should subject themselves unto their husbands. Have you also heard that God says husbands should love their wives? Recently, football matches are being played everywhere in the world. Sometimes these games are played in honor of the country or state. And at other times to entertain individuals. Which day has been set aside for a match to be played in honor of God? Luke chapter 12 verse 48, But he that knew not, and did commit things worthy of stripes, shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall much be required, and to whom men have committed much, of him they will ask the more. God knows your worth, have you complied with the text just read to us? To whom God has entrusted much wealth, he equally demands much from him. If God gives you much wealth, or money, do you not consider that God would demand much from you, for the service of his kingdom? What injunction has God given you concerning the poor? He that hath two coats let him impart to him that hath none, and he that hath meat, let him do likewise. Luke chapter 3 verse 11 Be your brother's keeper, have you complied with the injunction scripted above? You are claiming to be a child of brotherhood of the cross and star, and you claim to receive the Father's teachings daily. Have you complied with this instruction? God is not discriminatory. Therefore he cares for all his creatures. God has given you so much wealth so that you can use it in his services. Again God has been caring for you. He has protected you right from when you were born and so you have to do the same to the poor and the orphans. You are always taking good care of your wife by providing her with all her needs. What about the poor widows who are also in need of these things? Remember, only they would that we should remember the poor, the same which I also was forward to do. Galatians chapter 2 verse 10 Has this message not yet got to you? You are eating endlessly, you entertain and enjoy yourself, but how about the orphans, have you sent gifts to them at any time? It has been earlier stated that you should give unto Caesar things that belong to Caesar, and to God things that belong to God. This implies that you should give to the laborers of God what you have been enjoying with your families. Those who continue to serve God day and night should not be neglected. 
you should present gifts to them and also help them in whatever way you can, for such is the work of God. If work can be viewed as the work of God, what of the work of God, what of the work of love? You often sponsor soldiers by giving them everything they need with which to go to war and kill thousands of innocent souls. But what about those in the vineyard of God, do they not deserve your sponsorship? That is why I keep telling you that all the inhabitants of this world have equal rights in this kingdom. Essential services are neglected, every creature of God must be taken care of. You intend going into politics, you also spend your income on sponsoring political aspirants. Can you not also reason that the animals and all other creatures of God should be taken care of? It is obvious that you should support them as you have to comply with the injunction that you must give to Caesar that which belongs to Caesar and unto God, what belongs to God. Hence it is absolutely necessary that you make provision for the creatures of God. If you do not abide by these instructions given you in the scriptures, what then do you understand by this very important word, superintend? Or are you superintending over human beings only and abandoning all other creatures of God? You have to take care of all the creatures of God. Even the trees that you plant, provision must be made to see that they grow well. See Hebrews chapter 13 verses 1 to 3, let brotherly love continue. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Remember them that are in bonds, as bound with them, and them which suffer adversity, as being yourselves also in the body. God has provided us more than enough supplies with which to entertain strangers. Now search within your houses, and you will see excess of clothing, food, and many other things. With all these excesses endeavor to make adequate provision for strangers, your visitors and the less privileged ones. Henceforth essential things have to be always kept for the strangers because God has made such provisions ready. Do not forget the needy, were you called into this kingdom to joke or play? Have you made adequate provision for those who are in bondage, and even for those who are sick? When you prepare your budget estimates, do you make provision for the sick, the poor, and the hungry, those facing starvation? Who do you think will do this? Who will arrange for the funeral obsequies of the poor members? Are you not aware that you are expected to take care of all those things? These are the assignments which you were created to carry out in this kingdom. Again, consider all the evil doers, the fornicators, the idol worshipper, sorcerers, necromancers, the armed robbers, the thieves, the liars and all manners of evil doers. What provisions have you made for them so that they may see the need to change? The thieves and robbers would not be stealing if things have gone according to God's ordinances. No doubt most of them steal out of great necessity and if adequate provisions were made for the poor and needy ones, many would not have taken to stealing. Now ever since you started executing the armed robbers, have you succeeded in exterminating them? By that action, are you not also an evildoer? For all the evildoers in general, what provision have you made in order to direct them into the way of God, so that they may change and finally be saved by God? You have to be aware of these facts because this is our primary assignment in God's kingdom. What provisions have you made for them which will force them to do away with their established evil ways? Instead of this you always take delight in encouraging and witnessing their execution. Read Luke chapter 5 verses 30 to 35, But their scribes and Pharisees murmured against his disciples, saying, Why do ye eat and drink with publicans and sinners? And Jesus answering said unto them, They that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And they said unto him, Why do the disciples of John fast often, and make prayers, and likewise the disciples of the Pharisees, but thine eat and drink? And he said unto them, Can ye make the children of the bride chamber fast, while the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come, when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and then shall they fast in those days. On the other hand, what provision have you made for those who sacrifice themselves day and night in the service of God? Again I ask you, what provision have you also made for the idol worshippers, the occultists, sorcerers, and secret society members? Read Matthew chapter 25 verses 34 to 40, Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world, for I was an hungered, and ye gave me meat, 
I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink, I was a stranger, and ye took me in, naked, and ye clothed me, I was sick, and ye visited me, I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered, and fed thee? Or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in? Or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. No escape for the recalcitrant, can you now see how enormous the wisdom of God is? God knows how to make provision for both the obedient and disobedient children. Read Matthew chapter 25 verses 41 to end. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels, for I was unhungered, and ye gave me no meat, I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink, I was a stranger, and ye took me not in, naked, and ye clothed me not, sick, and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee unhungered, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as you did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And this shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Matthew chapter 25 verses 41 to 46. The above Bible passage reveals the provision made for evildoers, and it is indeed their reward. Various provisions have been made for various groups of persons. In the light of this, try to provide for all kinds of persons, the obedient ones, and even the disobedient ones. Were we to come to this knowledge of truth long before this time, the situation of things would have changed, and everybody would have been living comfortably throughout the world. Read Luke chapter 13 verses 5 to 12, I tell you, nay, but, except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. He spake also this parable, a certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought food thereon, and found none. Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and find none, cut it down, why cumbereth it the ground? And he answering said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig about it, and dung it, and if it bear fruit, well, and if not, then after that thou shalt cut it down. And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And, behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity eighteen years, and was bowed together, and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him, and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. Our Lord Jesus Christ has made it abundantly clear that in his Father's house there are many mansions. This is confirmed by the anthem rendered by 34 Umbo Choir. This is absolutely true and the virgins will be accommodated separately from where others, including the evil doers, would be accommodated. In the Father's mansion, accommodations have been provided for the thieves and also for the law-abiding children of God. God is no respecter of persons and also he cheats no one. Take for example, if somebody is being charged to undertake some charitable assignment, but along the line he becomes less functional, if another volunteers to support such a person, he would continue with his good works. But if it turns out there is none to assist him, he cannot do the work, and the assignment cannot flourish. Ultimately, the good works will perish, and that man of God will be forced to go back to his evil practices. By neglecting, and failing or even refusing to encourage and support the man engaged in God's services, we are all contributing toward the dwindling and eventual eradication of that good service. You must always support a man of God engaged in the services of God whichever way you can. Again we have to do all we can to change the evil ones unto God. You must realize that most of those who you will find indulging in these vices do not enjoy engaging in such vices. They may be engaging in such vices out of necessity, for it is said that necessity is the mother of invention. It is quite certain that if adequate provisions were made for these evil-minded brethren, they would not be indulging in any more evil practices. We have to do all we can to assist them to abstain from indulging in vices. Now you have to take note of these essential activities. 
This exercise is termed in business as the sinking fund, being that you invest in something that you do not really know what its outcome would be. You have to make sure provisions for those who are practicing evil are made. Change them and bring them back to the path of rectitude. But if they refuse to change, then you have to allow them to stay where they belong. Remember also to make adequate and effective provisions for those who labor day and night in the services of God. Think about what else will be the reward of those who have chosen to labor hard here in God's vineyard after abandoning the flesh, the world, with its lust, pomp and pageantry. Make adequate provision for those who have chosen to mortify the flesh, with its lust and affections. They have turned their backs on the luxuries of the world, and they have come out to serve God. These are the ones who really need our encouragement. What will be the reward for the recalcitrant ones if there is no special provision made for the righteous and the true laborers of God? Therefore in this kingdom, special provisions have been made for each and every individual according to each individual's character. Our expectations, it should not be an automatic event or an established constitution that when someone offends in stealing, he must be executed. No, that is not what I expect of us in this kingdom, especially so, now that the kingdom of this world has become the kingdom of God and his Christ. Our main duty, rather, is to make adequate provision for the various inhabitants of the world. Those who obey their parents will be given special provision, and the disobedient ones will be provided for separately. Same will be evident in all aspects of human behaviors. The lazy ones have been provided a place. Those who are very hardworking and they help to elevate the services of God have been equally provided for, and they also have their special place. This is how things are arranged in heaven and must also be done on earth. All the animals, including the birds, the plants including all the trees, mankind, including even the insane ones, men, women and children, need adequate care. If people were taking adequate care of them, would they have been lost to the world? Better still, would you have found an insane person in your house or on the street corners if adequate provision have been readily available to them? Read Genesis chapter 1 verses 26 to end, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree, in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed, to you it shall be for meat. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and, behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Genesis chapter 1 verses 26 to 31. The above injunction constitute the perfect injunction of God given to us. This is what God expects of man. All those who would always want to kill, to maim, and destroy, have you heard that the scripture has commanded us to superintend over all the creatures of God? You have been told of the virgin forest in Oban, how beautiful the trees are, and the forest can be used as a tourist center when it is set aside as a game reserve. You are also aware that the government has preserved acres of land where hunting of animals is prohibited. The animals inhabiting those lands are preserved only for people to watch them in their natural habitat. Even the hills, the valleys are a tourist attraction if they can be preserved and maintained so people can go and observe the glory of God. That is what God expects from mankind. Mind your natural assignment, brethren, are you now aware that we have not hearkened sufficiently to the injunctions of God? When God said, go and superintend over the creatures, do you interpret superintend to mean that you should go and kill them? No. You are not meant to kill them but you are only supposed to make provision for each and every creature of God. If you were to take a trip into the various forests, you would have been surprised at the mysteries of God. 
You can recall when David and Saul were warring against each other. There were hiding places in between the mountains. One of such places housed Saul and his soldiers, and David used the other side, but none of them knew this. These are some of the mysteries of God. Again if you take a trip into some other forest, you will discover that one particular forest is dominated by birds only, and this is evidenced by the different kinds of fowls of the air that inhabit such forest. In another forest, you could see all kinds of lower or higher animals. Do you think some had specially introduced them into these special locations? Nobody kept them there but God alone, in his infinite wisdom, kept them there and he takes adequate care of them by himself. Therefore the duty of man in this world is to superintend over the creatures of God as God has enjoined, by making provisions for all of them, so that he may not be having problems. Do not oppose God any longer, God had perfected his creations but man is constantly defiling other creatures. Instead of superintending over the creatures of God, man kills the animals, birds, and trees, etc., and thereby destroys the creation of God. This happens because man is not interested in seeing about things as God has ordered man. Beloved brethren, your duty is to superintend over the creatures of God so that they may be seen by those willing to see the mysteries of God in their different locations. Take for example the grinding stone, if you go near the locations of various rock formations, you will find such places littered with grinding stones. You will find people who gather these stones and make pots and other utensils out of them. God in his infinite wisdom has designed these things and he has designed them for our own good. Those who discover them find out that these things give glory to God as man appreciates them. Like the cattle in the northern part of Nigeria, do you think they are owned by men? All of them are owned by God. If you were to concentrate and pray to God to reveal his mysteries to you, you would regret ever destroying these creatures. You would also know the importance of every herb, leaf, and flower and you would be able to use them to your own advantage. Most people take interest in superintending over men but this is not God's schedule for man. But if you superintend over the animals, they will protect and cater for you and your things more than your fellow human being would. This is their assigned duty from creation while yours is to care for them. In this wise, you can see man has purposely refused to carry out the injunctions of God. This indeed shows that man is blind. Can the blind lead another blind? In a place like India they do not kill God's creations, not even a small animal like the lizard. They have realized that everything has its own place and importance and therefore nothing should be destroyed indiscriminately. Identify your gift, many of you have been given different gifts. There are those gifted to understand the language of the animals, the trees, and all kinds of things. So if you were to make good use of these creations of God, you would find out that they would be of better service to you than your fellow human beings are. They would take better care of your children and belongings. Like the gorilla family, when any of their member dies, the rest will bury the dead gorilla just as man does. And so all the things which you count as nothing are of absolute importance. For your information, the image and likeness of God is man but all other creatures are angels. And so when God goes the way of man, he takes the form of man and he manifests as man, but if any of the angels manifest, they do not take the form of human beings. He may manifest as a gorilla, a cat, a dog, or any other animal. And when they depart this life and form, they return to their original form. And so brethren, these constitute the mysteries of God. God makes no mistakes, God has perfected his creation so all that is left for man is to learn so that we may be able to teach, guide and direct the rest of creation. As you move about on evangelical tours, so do the plants, and animals move about because they too have their own kingdom. As you sleep, they also sleep, and when you wake up, they also wake up at the same time. Be aware therefore that God had perfected his creation. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verses 15 to end, if the foot shall say, Because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, Because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now hath God set the members every one of them in the body, as it hath pleased him. And if they were all one member, where were the body? 
But now are they many members, yet but one body. And they I cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more those members of the body, which seem to be more feeble, are necessary, and those members of the body, which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor, and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it, or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. And God hath set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Have all the gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But covet honestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verses 15 to 31. Also read 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verses 1 to 7. Now concerning the things whereof you wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence, and likewise also the wife unto the husband. The wife hath not power of her own body, but the husband, and likewise also the husband hath not power of his own body, but the wife. Defraud ye not one the other, except it be with consent for a time, that ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer, and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. But I speak this by permission, and not of commandment. For I would that all men were even as I myself. But every man hath his proper gift of God, one after this manner, and another after that. Let my peace and blessing abide with the entire world, now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you, Father.